inductees, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by saying what these I am to be here this evening. 61 years to the day. After the Dominican Labor Party was formed in 1955. It was on the 27th of April, 1955, that this great organization was formed. And here are we tonight, 61 years later, reflecting on and being proud of his achievements and still being able to attract large numbers of new persons, new members to it. So I want to welcome all of you tonight and to congratulate the inductees of the very bold stand which we have taken. We are also meeting a thing, of course, when the country is celebrating 50 years of nationhood. And it is appropriate that the party that took the country into independence should be in government at this time because it would have been a very awkward situation for us in Barbados if we were celebrating 50 years of independence and those celebrations were being led by a party that was doubtful about independence. <laughs> to be fair to those who doubted 50 years ago, wisdom has now prevailed and they accept that the boldness and the sagacity of the Democratic Labour Party was quite justified in 1966. And we are therefore, we are therefore indebted to the founder of this organization, or the founders of this organization, but in particular, the late by excellent Carol Walton Barrow, the country's first Prime Minister, and the late Sir James Tudor, his incorrigible and unswerving ally, and the man who actually chose the 30th of November 1966 as the day of our independence. Sir James has made a massive and substantial and strategically very important contribution to the Democratic Labour Party and also to Barbados. He was the Minister of Education at the time when he introduced free secondary education. He was also the Minister of Education at the time when he introduced the school meal service. And he served as Barbados' foreign minister. Uh, he served as Barbados' minister for Caribbean and Latin American affairs. And it is interesting that 50 years after independence, the man who chose the day, and the man who was so instrumental in getting the day off the ground in 1961 after he came to office in terms of free secondary education and free school meals, that there are no monuments anywhere across Barbados in tribute to James Newman Tudor. I think that that is an irregularity or an injustice which has to be corrected. He has made a great contribution to Barbadian politics. And only recently I was perusing some parliamentary debates from the year 1967. And discovered that he too was being a harbinger of something new when he was talking about a sixth form college in Barbados. 
Now, to say that he was talking about it in 1967 and was being questioned about it by the opposition in the SQS debate of that year is not to subtract anything from, from his successor as Minister of Education who actually spearheaded the establishment of the Barbados Community College. But it goes to show how forward-looking and how progressive the Democratic Labour Party has been from its earliest days. So those of you who are joining the party tonight are encouraged to understand that joining a political party is a very serious step. I know that in recent times, there have been people running around in constituencies across Barbados, dropping application forms in people's hands and telling them to fill them out and to hand them back in, that they will pay the persons who were handing out these forms will pay the application fee. In some cases, and I have personal experience of this, the persons handed these applications forms did not even know which party the forms related to. So one person approached me and said, Sir, I am very pleased to join your party. I came back in the form. And I had to let him know that when you join the Democratic Labour Party, it's not done that way. He'd be handed the form, filled it up, and sent it back in but did not even know that he was not joining the Democratic Labour Party, but was joining another organization. But that is where you are into just the recruitment of political carpet diapers. So, so, electorally specific purposes, and not trying to get people educated enough to understand what the serious making of political decisions uh, is all about. So I want to say to the inductees a few things here tonight. The Democratic Labour Party which you have joined and which you have sworn tonight, or uh, affirmed tonight that you are going to remain loyal to and that you're going to uh, commit yourself to. When it was formed in 1965, it was formed on the basis of a philosophy. A philosophy is a worldview, a view of what kind of world you think or uh, any an institution thinks we should be living in, how that world should be configured. And the Democratic Labour Party started with a clear philosophy. We started with the objective of trying to create a just society in Barbados. Now in 1955, Barbados was still a colony. We were still subject to dictation from our colonial masters in the United Kingdom. We were never a grant-aided colony. We never had to depend on money coming from the United Kingdom to sustain us in our efforts to develop this society. But as a colony, the United Kingdom continued to be responsible for our defense and for our foreign relations. But in 1955, we took the decision that this organization had to be formed and that it had to construct a vision for Barbados, and that vision was to create a just society. Now we could only have taken that decision to create a just society if the society as we perceived it was an unjust society. And the truth is that most, that all, colonial societies are unjust because invariably wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few people and the vast majority of people are left to compete for 
the crumbs that fall from the table of the wealthy and better off people in this society. We fought the 1956 during the election and lost. And in fact, in that election, our leader lost his seat, Mr. Barack. But by 1958, he was back. And in 1961, we came to office on a manifesto that made it clear that the road to destiny, the 1961 manifesto of the Democratic Labour Party made it clear that the road to destiny is the road to independence. So very early, we took the decision that you cannot set about trying to create a just society. You cannot set about crafting a serious vision for your society if you are still taking instructions from people outside of your country. That power has to be vested in the people who are running the society. And therefore, the Democratic Labour Party is manifestly made it clear in 1961, the road to destiny is the road to independence. And by 1966, we have taken the country into independence. The philosophy, the worldview of the Democratic Labour Party is tonight, as I speak to you, and has always been from the day of this formation, that power must, political power must never be used for the benefit of only a few privileged people in the society. That when political power is vested in leaders by the masses of the people, that political power should be used to benefit the masses of the people of this country. So that we reject as heretical, we reject as invalid any view that says that the role of the people of Barbados, the masses of the people who live in our communities, their role is to vote and to choose governments. But once the government has been chosen, the government should step aside and pass the power that has been given on to any privileged minority in society. We reject that. We believe as a philosophy that political power should be exercised for the benefit of the broad mass of the people through society. And allied to that view is the other view that we do not believe that the wealth of the society should be concentrated in the hands of a minority in society when the vast majority of people again have to compete with crumbs that fall from their table. We believe and we have said over and over again as uh, one of the tenets in our philosophy that the wealth of this country should be redistributed on the principle of maximum social advantage. That means that when governments are given power, they don't come to office to look after the rich only. We have not come, as, as Mr. Barry used to always say, to confirm the mighty in their seats. We have come to exalt the humble and the meek. And that is what successive administrations of the Democratic Labour Party have done. So power should be used for the benefit of the majority, and the wealth of the country should be redistributed on the principle of maximum social advantage. And we believe that all of this can only take place if men and institutions remain free and we live. In the Constitution of Barbados, that men and institutions can remain free only if that freedom is based on moral and spiritual values and on the rule of law. So, as a party in government, we have made sure that the institutions and the individuals of this country remain.
made free. We've ensured that we protected and continue to protect the rule of law, not the rule of anybody's discretion, or not the rule of anybody's color, or not the rule of the texture of anybody's hair, not the rule of anybody's fancy. We believe in the rule of law and equality before the law. That is the organization you are joining tonight. And it is to those principles that I am inviting you to continue to subscribe. We have christened that philosophy the philosophy of democratic socialism. The word socialism connoting that the interest of the general mass of the society preponderate over the interests of any one individual or, or any small group and the word democratic connoting that men and institutions must remain free and the, the rule of law must remain entrenched. That is the organization you have sworn to serve tonight. And I want to say to you that in subscribing to those values and subscribing to that philosophy, you have done yourselves and your family, your families, proud. Because any other philosophy would be a contradiction of your interests and the interests of your families, and any other philosophy would not have had the capacity to get Barbados to where it is tonight as one of the most highly respected uh, developing countries across the world. And the Democratic Labour Party has to be thanked for that. In joining the BNP, you're joining a pass. What is that pass? That this party has established a record in Barbados, a record of service to the people of Barbados that is second to none. I don't want over and over again to have to recite all the multiple achievements of this organization at the social, political, and economic level to remind you how great an organization in the LB is and what a great organization you have joined today. But I would have failed you if I did not tickle your memory a bit and help you to reflect on how great this organization has been for Barbados. For a start, it was the Democratic Labour Party that took Barbados in the independence. Let us start. So, we have never believed that our destiny as a people should rest in anybody else's hands or should be determined by anybody else. We were a colony of the United Kingdom, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. We were England first and then Great Britain and then United Kingdom. For 339 years, and it was the Democratic Labour Party that determined that 339 years were enough, in fact, were far too many, and that we should take our destiny into our own hands. We had to fight not the United Kingdom. But we had to fight people here. Because one of the paradoxes of colonialism is that amongst the ranks of the subject people, you can find sometimes the greatest defenders of the system. And therefore, we had to fight interests here who were telling us that we should continue to be under the tutelage and the guardianship of. of uh, a foreign power rather than take our destiny and our own hands. So we took this country in independence. At the social level, we transformed it through education and through health. The General Secretary uh, is highlighting the centrality of education in all that the Democratic Labour Party has done and has believed over the years. We have 
made sure that every single household in this country, the boss, the dad, some occupants of that household, or all occupants of that household nowadays, have had access to secondary education. That was not always so. We take it for granted now. But there was a time when our grandparents heard the money. In fact, even my parents could aspire no further than a seven standard education at the primary school. Every single household in Barbados today, thanks to them, thank you for Barbados, has access to secondary education. in tertiary education because primary education is compulsory. Secondary education is compulsory, but tertiary education is optional. Everybody is on tertiary education. But for all those persons who want to access tertiary education, we've made sure that tertiary institutions, a tertiary educational outfit has been made available for the people of Barbados. The Barbados Community College is a creature of the policy of the Democratic Union Party. The Samuel Jackson Preston Polytechnic is a creature of the policy of the Democratic Union Party. The Barbados Hospitality Institute is a creature of the policy of the Democratic Union Party. And for those who wanted to go beyond Institutional at the Community College and the Samuel Jackson Preston Polytechnic and the Hospitality Institute, the Democratic Labour Party made sure as early as 1963 that a campus of the University of the West Indies was established here in Barbados. And today, when you see the cable gap, I'm the time we have a cable campus in Barbados tonight. Because of the Democratic Republic. A Republic of the plane and flew over Barbados to look for the best area of land to put the campus, chose Cable, and that is where we have the Cable campus. We have pursued enlightened health policies. We've tried to make or ensure that we've made health. Access to health care or make, to make health care accessible. The body wants to get it. To make it affordable. Anybody who wants to access it can afford to get it. And of course, to make it available so that no matter what part of the country you are, there is some health institution to which you have ease of access. Uh, because of this available. That's the party you end up pleased to join tonight. Economically, we have made sure that we transformed the Barbados economy. It was the Democratic Labour Party, and our power was vilified for this. That foresaw that we could not always rely on sugar. In fact, at a May Day rally in St. Philip in the late 1960s, around 1968, he said that the time would come when we would be able to stand up in King George the fifth park and look down to St. Lucy and not see a game play. Of course, he was accused of saying that that is what he wanted. But the sugar industry in the British West Indies has been, has been in decline since the 19th century. And he knew that that trend was not going to be reversed. And therefore, that the foundations had to be laid for the creation of a new economic sector. And that is why two things happened. Now, in 1966, when Barbados became independent, this country was producing 175,000 tons of sugar. In fact, the year after independence, 1967, this country produced 204,000 tons of sugar. So we were still worshipping at the throne of King Sugar. But 
the encourage of providing you that that is not sustainable. And systematically over time, you've seen a reduction in the acreage available for the plant dinner because the vegetable chicken came here in Barbados. All of us, Barbados, we've been seeing that shrinkage. Now, we, we've not abandoned sugar. We've been looking at, rather than committing ourselves to a sugar industry, simplicity, to create a sugar cane industry where we can have a little more flexibility in terms of what we get out of the relationship. But we have an economy tonight led by tourism, and the Democratic Labour Party has contributed massively to the development of, of the tourist sector in Barbados. You don't mind that the Hilton Hotel was demolished and rebuilt in 1967. The Hilton Hotel, one year after independence, the Hilton Hotel was opened by Errol Barrow because it was built at the time of the project. It was conceptualized and pursued by the late Winter Algernon Coffer, who was the deputy premier of Barbados between 1961 and 1965, and it came to full birth and fluorescence in 1967, opened by Mr. Barrow uh, in 1967. And of course, the Barbados Hospitality Institute was put in place so that we wouldn't only have hotels, but we would have people trained to go and work in those hotels. That is what the policy was as we tried to transform the success. It was tourism, but not only tourism. You hear a lot of talk today about the international business and financial services sector. And yes, it's a very important sector. Contributed much to our foreign exchange earnings and uh, to our corporate tax revenues. And as a government, we are committed to protecting that sector from all the slings and arrows of outrageous uh, political fortune as day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, we have to be fighting battle after battle uh, as this sector is assaulted uh, by developed countries. When wealth was leaving this region, and going to the North Atlantic in the 17th and 18th centuries and 19th centuries. When wealth was leaving here and going to the North Atlantic, nobody was going to pay. These islands were impoverished by slavery and colonialism because wealth was leaving here and going up north. All of a sudden, as a result now of what has been happening in the offshore sector, it appears to the people up north, that wealth is leaving up north and coming back here. And all of a sudden, a whole new vocabulary has been invented to stand in the way of countries like ours. You hear about money laundering and banking risks and correspondent banking risks and financing of terrorism and all these things. This whole new vocabulary has now been invented in order to make sure that those persons who want to invest their money in offshore domiciles like Barbados are kept under constant scrutiny because rather than pay taxes in other countries, the countries from which they come namely the United States of America, United Kingdom, and Canada, want those taxpayers to come back home and pay that to the home. So when our wealth is leaving and going up north, no problem. Now it appears that wealth is leaving the north and coming down here, we have a whole menu of problems. But this international business and financial services sector did not just come into existence because somebody snapped the finger and decided let us try a little thing. In 1965, the year before independence, the Democratic Labour Party, led by Aaron Barrow, passed in Parliament an International Business Act. The whole purpose of that was to attract as much international business as possible to Barbados 
laying the foundations for the uh, international business and financial services sector we have in Barbados today. That is the kind of hindsight, the kind of insight, and the kind of foresight that the Democratic Labour Party boasted and continues to boast today. That is why, in the peace, you have joined a great party tonight. So whether you're talking socially or economically or politically, that will be political part of it has to do with our taking the country into independence, with our broadening the country's vision by getting involved in Carifta first of all, and living in Caribbean, and now in the Caribbean single market and economy, all of this has happened under the Democratic Republic. It was Eric Barrow who spearheaded the formation of Carifta in 1965, along with Hawks Burning and Pierre from Walbert of Antigua. It was Eric Barrow who was one of the four signatories at Chagaramas in 1973 on the 4th of July, along with Dr. Harry Williams, the late Dr. Harry Williams, Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, the late Michael Norman Manley, Prime Minister of Jamaica, and the late Lyndon Ford Samson Burnham, uh, Prime Minister of Ghana, that signed the Treaty of Chagaramas to bring Gary Hall into existence. And then in, 19... in 1989, at Granada's in Grenada, the Democratic Labour Party was there again. And it is not without significance that Barbados should be given lead responsibility in the CARICOM quasi cabinet for the Caribbean single market and economy. So, whether you're talking socially, politically, or economically, the Democratic Labour Party has been up there providing leadership for the people of Barbados. Now, let me just, before I sit down, let me say this. Over the last seven eight years, the world has been going through a very difficult time. In the last quarter of 2007, the world went into a global financial meltdown. The rest of the world I'm talking about. It all started in the United States of America. And because of this, monster called globalization. Professor X. Nifford, the late Professor X. Nifford, wants to define globalization as a new name for an old obscenity. Because of that, what started in the United States of America spread right across the Western world. Contagion spread, and of course all countries linked to the Western economy uh, found themselves in a situation where their economies were affected in greater or lesser degree. The world has not yet recovered from what happened in the last quarter of 2007. Only yesterday, I took up the World Economic Outlook, published by the International Monetary Fund. It was published this month, April 2016, by the International Monetary Fund. Interestingly enough, the title of that World Economic Report says, Too Slow for Too Long. Too Slow for Too Long. Because the whole thesis of the report, 200 and something pages long, is that the world has been bouncing back from 2007 far too slowly and the whole process is taking much too long. Now when you listen to some of the high priests around here in this country, you get the impression that the rest of the world is in a state of unprecedented prosperity. But that somehow, we here in Barbados are so fundamentally flawed that 
that nothing is happening here. I have news for you. The entire Western world is still struggling. The entire Western world, including the United States of America, which started, certainly including the United Kingdom. And Canada has had its, has been having its days. All the so-called emerging economies, the so-called great countries like Brazil, Brazil is now facing its most serious crisis in the last 25, 30 years. Russia, the Russian economy, is has been in recession for a little while. India is growing, but and we are very glad for India. But the challenge of dealing with poverty in India is so Herculean a challenge that it will take some considerable time before the fruits of that growth are felt and experienced right through Indian society. The Chinese economy suffered a little slump, but it's trying to stabilize. And of course, the economy in South Africa uh, has been facing acute challenges as well. And small countries like the ones here in the Caribbean, vulnerable economies, have been experiencing their challenges as well. Quite a few of our countries are in the MF programs, and Barbados has had its own share of challenges. Because if the countries on which we depend for our uh, foreign receipts are doing badly or are not doing as well as they are accustomed to, it is quite natural that we will feel the effects of I would have been very glad as Prime Minister Bobby. If all the tourists of whom we had to depend used to come from the Bayland, or from Silver Hill and Christ Church, or from the Ivy, or from Enterprise, because we could control that. Unfortunately, that's not true. They come from the United States of America, they come from Canada, they come from the United Kingdom, and they come from other parts of the Caribbean. I know it is to get some out of Northern Europe. So if they are facing challenges in those countries, if tourists have lost their, if people who want to travel have lost their jobs, or if they are forced to discipline themselves in terms of what they spend and how they spend it, we are bound to feel the effects of it. Similarly, international business and financial services sector, and these are two even sectors in the economy, the investors in international business predominantly don't come from Barbados or, or from any village around here. Our international business comes out of Canada in, uh, for the most part, some of the United States of America, some of the United Kingdom. So if they're facing challenges, and if their governments are telling them that rather than go and pay your taxes in places like Barbados and Bermuda and the Cayman Islands, we want you to come back home and pay them at home. And we're not going to rest until they come back home and pay them here. We and Barbados have strong hands. President Obama fought the last election that he fought for the, for the American presidency. By telling Americans, that was the debate between him and McCormick. Bringing American business back home. That is the challenge which we continue to face. A presidential campaign is going on in the United States of America now. Hey, listen to me very carefully. Because let me tell you something. I have listened to many, many presidential campaigns in that great country. And I've followed many in Canada. And I followed many in the United Kingdom. In the present campaign, so far, this can change, so I'm not 
saying this tonight as though can I change? Or I know it didn't happen in the last one or the one before that or the one before that. I have not heard the word Caribbean mentioned yet. In any of the meetings. I hear the release, I hear the Eurozone, I hear Mexico because the wall is supposed to be built in that connection. You have not heard the word Caribbean used in any debate in the United States of America. That's what it is. So we have to carve our own nation, find our own way. Because ever since the end of the Cold War, we lost our strategic importance uh, to these countries. I raised this question with an official uh, recently on a trip, on, on a trip. And he said to me, the reason why you don't hear, hear us, and it, was, it was an American I was talking to, the reason why you don't hear us talking about the Caribbean is because the people in the Caribbean are very well behaved. You don't give any trouble, so we don't, we don't have to worry about it. Tell me that. But that is the, the Barbados that we live in tonight. So you, 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 you in that piece of joined the past, but you also joined the present. You've been going through this very challenging period. It is getting better, but it will take time. As I said, the IMS World Economic Outlook Report carries the, the title Too Slow for Too Long. So you not only join the past and the present, you join the future. Because even though we are going through these challenges, the Democratic Labour Party in government has crafted a vision for the future of Barbados that rests on four pillars. We want to create a Barbados that is socially balanced, a Barbados that is economically viable, a Barbados that is environmentally sound, and a Barbados that is characterized by good, honest, and transparent governance. Socially balanced means, or we intend by social balance to mean, that every Barbados of whatever station in life from one of our origins should be able to find a place in this society where he or she can realize his or her God-given talents. And we will not consider that we have a socially balanced of our business until we get to that stage. We know that there are people who have enough money in our business to take care of themselves. So, they are not the government's responsibility. It is the people who can't take care of themselves that have to be our responsibility. And that's why you want to create some social balance in life. Economically viable. I just told you what pillars our economy rests on. We also depend heavily on the importation of petroleum products. So that when our prices were spiraling out of control, Rather than spending money on housing, low income housing for people, we had to spend it on putting up at very high and sometimes busy in places. So we've taken the decision to take advantage of what is going on in the world now and try to transition the economy away from dependence on fossil fuels to renewable sources of energy. And the, the renewable source most available to us is sunshine. Nobody in this room tonight can stand up and tell me that we have ever had to import sunshine from anywhere. We get it free. And I always tell the story of Jamie Trusted, Philip one morning, a Sunday morning, seeing a woman going across a lonely road on her way to church, obviously. Sun beating down. And I stopped my car and I said, No, no, I know you still have some distance to travel. Can I offer you a ride? said, sir, thanks, but no thanks, I prefer to walk. I was a little puzzled um, as to why she would take that position, because the sun was very not easy that morning at all. She then volunteered an explanation. She said, sir, you see this sun? I live the better part of my working life in the United States. And when I wanted heating, I had to pay for it. I'm getting this free, so let me enjoy it. (laughs) 
So we have taken advantage of that and trained to transition the economy to renewable sources of energy. That transition is not going to happen overnight. I can tell you it is on the way. We have put in place a new electric light and power act and all the mechanisms needed to ensure that that transition takes place are being uh, pursued. Because we want to hear about this economically well. If we can produce energy from renewable sources, we don't have to pay large sums of money for the importation of petroleum products. Because our prices are not going to remain down. We're going to go back now in the fullness of time. But it is a council of prudence and wisdom that those countries that have depended heavily on the petroleum industry only are now experiencing acute problems because of very low prices. Venezuela has been having these challenges. Venezuela is an uh, ally of Barbados over the years, having severe challenges. So, too. As our sister country comes to drink that and the bed. But then, of course, countries like Russia, countries like Nigeria, all these oil dependent countries have been having a very rough time because of falling oil prices. So, we want to make the country economically better. We want to make the environmentally sound. Only last week, I signed up the United Nations the Paris Agreement, the climate change agreement uh, agreed in, in Paris uh, last December. And we have committed ourselves to creating the most advanced green economy in this part of the, of the hemisphere. Because we take the position that no matter what else you achieve, no matter what else you achieve as a country, and your people are living in a degraded environment, all of those gains are going to be cancelled out. So we want an environmentally sound Barbados. And this government is going to pass an Environmental Management Act, not too long from now, to put in place all of those standards that must be observed as we pursue the creation of an environmentally sound Barbados. Good, honest, and transparent governance that depends our ensuring that men and institutions remain free and that the rule of law continues to be fair, but it depends on the others. It depends on ensuring that we attract the right people into politics. That when people join political parties and when they say they want to become candidates for election to parliament, they're not coming just to use the political party for their own advancement and then eventually, by greed or otherwise, to bring the party into disrepute. You've seen a lot of that happen in days of yore. Fortunately, the Democratic Party has been able to steer clear of that. The other side has tried to smear us, but we have not succeeded in so doing. And it's because we pursue in this organization uh, a process of rigorous scrutiny in terms of those people who we allow to go there and be the voices of this organization in the public domain. You can't see everything. We don't hear everything. But we try our best to ensure that the highest possible standards are maintained in and for this organization in government and government.
Jerusalem has always heard the belief that you can hold a leadership position, but you cannot lead anybody unless you can lead them on the basis of moral authority. All right. Say this to you in the peace tonight. You can sleep comfortably. You can walk with your chest up because you don't have to worry about the integrity of the man who is leading you. Down. So, welcome to all of you. And Thanks for the confidence you have placed with them that they have acquired by joining them. We have many organizations within this organization. Women can have access to our Women's League. The youngsters can have access to our Young Democrats. All of you can have access to our educational arm what used to be called the Academy of Politics, what was later called the James Student Institute of Politics. These, these organizations within the organization are available to you. Make full use of them. Get to know your party well. Because if you don't know it well, and if you're not wise to its accomplishments, when it comes under attack, you will not be able to properly defend it. It's very important that you know as much as possible about the organization which you draw to know. And I want to assure all of you that we will continue to set the highest possible standards in this organization and to make sure that you are vindicated by the decision you have taken to join the Democratic Labour Party and to become part of the effort to make Barbados a better place for all of us. Welcome again, and thank you very much.